Hey, Las Vegas. Thanks for joining us today on Realty Check. I'm your host, Trish Williams. We appreciate you guys tuning into the show. And if you are watching and following our show, take a moment, please, to like, comment, share, tell your friends about it. We always have good information for you here. We are bringing you the what's happening in Las Vegas in real estate straight from the professionals. So you get the real deal here. Um, so today on our show, we're going to be talking about property management. A lot of people have some property management questions and all the rental chaos and everything going on out there in the market. You've all heard about it. You're living it. You're experiencing it. And we brought in an expert, a property manager, to talk to us about what's happening out there. So before we get started, though, before I introduce my guest, I do want to take a second to say Happy Veterans Day. Thank you to all of our veterans that are out there serving and that have served. And we really appreciate your work that you're doing, your service that you're providing, keeping us safe here at home. And we um, just happy Veterans Day to, to all of you. And uh, with on that note, I want to introduce our guest. We have Mark Lister with Keller Williams Realty. He's a property manager. And Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been doing this? 21 years. Uh, years. I've worked with two brokers, so I've learned a lot uh, 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 going from the ground up because this is a business where you have to get lots of experience and there's a lot of little things that can go wrong. So it's important to, to get that experience. And a year and a half ago, I've uh, gone on my own now. Yeah. So. And Mark, I, you, you do our, when we have our team conferences and stuff like that in the office, you will talk a lot about property management. You're very resourceful and knowledgeable. So I'm very happy to have you here on the show today. Thank you. So every week I open up the show and we talk about current inventory, um, single family homes on the market for sale, where our inventory's at. We're seeing a little bit of a difference than we have over the past two months. So these numbers are shifting just a bit. Um, our single family home inventory right now is 3,257 uh, 3, single family homes for sale on the market. Last week, we've been about, I would say about 3,500 to 3,900 over the last couple months. So this number is dropping a bit. That means less inventory, more homes are selling. And price reductions. We've, over the last few months, we've been hovering around 500 in the 500 range of price reductions every week. This week, we're at 441 price reductions for the week. So that number is dropping a little bit. I'm seeing a little more activity. This little, like, temporary slowdown seems like it's picking back up again. What are your thoughts on what's going on with real estate right now? Well, on, on the sales side of it, uh, I think there's an opportunity for investors and, and uh, buyer's agents to get in there and uh, get some rental properties and, and get those under the belt. Because uh, if you look on the, on the rental side of it, uh, there, a normal market for, uh, for rentals should be around 6,000 inventory on the MLS. 6,000 rentals? Yes, that's wow. a normal. Yeah. Okay? We're at 1460, and that's on the MLS. That's everything: condos, townhouses, houses, anything you can put uh, for rent on the MLS. 1460 is holds on the MLS, which has so come up. That's 1460 rentals. If you're looking for a rental across all price ranges, 1460 is yep. how many there are out there. Yep. Wow, that, that's what bedrooms, six not a bedrooms, lot. whatever. Yeah. yeah, that is not a lot. No, it's not. <laughs> However, it has gone up. It was uh, the summer we got to about a low of around six, seven hundred, and wow. how? Uh, and uh, now break it down. Single family houses right now the inventory is a thousand nineteen on the MLS. Okay. okay, that's everything: big houses, small houses, the whole bit. And if you look at condos, townhouses, you're right around about four hundred. Okay? Oh wow. Which has come up as well. Uh, the uh, uh, condos was like around only about 100 in the summertime. And uh, houses got as low as under 500. First time I've ever seen that, that low of an inventory. Uh, so, I, I remember sometime during the summer, someone had called me for, you know, a specific rental. And I you know, typed in all the stuff in the MLS and was like, wow, nothing Nothing popped up. There was nothing there. <laughs> so yeah, there's, um, so this shortage, this inventory shortage, rent prices are raising. It's not stopping people from the, the increase in rent prices and it's stopping people from getting into rentals. They're still, they're still renting. Yeah. Oh, they're still renting. They're, they're having a hard time to find a place, but they're still renting. Yeah. And now what, what I would suggest if someone's looking to rent start at the beginning of the month, because most people give notice to move, uh, uh 
you, you, you get your inventory, say, on the first, okay. okay? And so when people get notice to move, the first week, they're not so active. Second week, they get real active. And the third week, we're in panic, and now you're competing with all those people in the panic mode. Where if you got in the first week, there's a little more inventory, and you have a little more selection. That's a good tip. That mm. is a very good tip. Now, one of the things with the inventory shortage and everything that's happened over this last year in the rental world, tenant requirements to get into rentals have increased. Yeah, most places, uh, and some of them, I think, have gotten ridiculous. But uh, the big thing I would say is uh, get if your credit's low, get your credit up. That's a big one right now. Mm -hmm. If it's under 600, it's going to be very difficult to get a rental property. You know, there might be some like me. I look at the whole thing, and in some cases, we can take them with higher deposit. But if you get your, credit, uh, your FICA score over 600, you have a better chance of getting a rental property. Yes. So the next thing is make sure your, your income is good. Go through your income, and if you're self-employed, pay the taxes, get the tax, uh, the tax records, get us something to work with. Because a lot of times they just hand you uh, bank statements, and the bank statements doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell me where the income is coming in. Right. Then the other thing is make sure you make your last landlord happy so they <laughs> give you good landlord reference. Because those do get checked. They do. We yes. look at those uh, very, very well. And, if, and, and also evictions. So there's a, there's a misunderstanding on evictions. If I, if I give an eviction notice to someone, okay, it's a seven-day notice to pay or quit. Either they give me the keys or they give me the rent, and then those goes null and void. That means they don't, if they pay me the rent or gave me the keys, they did not get evicted. Oh. Okay. They did not get evicted. They did the right thing. They did one or the other. However, if they ignore me, and then we have to get the constable out and lock them out. Now we got an eviction. And just like if you were to go to a car dealer and had a car repo, that's a kiss of death on a car sale. It's a kiss of death um, on a uh, rental. They don't want to rent to someone that's been evicted. So by all means, do whatever you can to hand the keys back. And, and at least walk away from it if you can't do anything else. Right, absolutely. And I feel like this is something that sometimes people when they're younger, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're 18, 19 years old. They move out in their first rental. They're not really responsible yet. They learn the hard way. They don't think about the future, what's going on. And then you see them later on when they're trying to get their life together in their 20s. You yeah. know, they'd move back in with mom or mom and dad or, you know, whatever during all that time. And then now they want to go off on their own, starting a family, doing everything. They can't get into a rental because that eviction didn't go away. No, it didn't. They don't go away no do is there a timeline on those i think it's about six or seven years but if it shows up on the credit they're it's they don't look at the denial. time they just see eviction and that's it it's done it's done it's yeah. denial so in those cases people that have that you know maybe they made bad mistakes in their past they've got to go back to that property manager or somehow try to resolve or work that out to get it off. That's their only option of removing that, correct? And you also have to remember those property managers have to, we're set at a higher standard. We have to follow fair housing. So fair housing says I have to treat everybody the same. Mm -hmm. So I have to use the same guidelines on each and every person. So if I have one person that's uh, been evicted, okay, that fits, that, that, that's automatic denial. That's it, it's done. Yeah. Because I can't pick favorites. Yeah. Fair housing doesn't allow me to do that. There's no options for that. No, no. I agree. No. And um, another thing that I have uh, heard that is always an automatic denial is felons. No, that is that not is true. That is not true? No, okay. they, have, they have changed that now. Uh, and rightfully so. Because we, we took a, a tenant on. He shows up with a family in a BMW. Real, real nice. Okay, but he's, got, he's a felon. Okay, well, we looked into it, which is what you're supposed to do. Research well, he was situation. accessory to mm -hmm. it, okay? Mm -hmm. The real bad guy, he, get, he got sent to some serious time. This guy did a little bit of time, went back out, okay, and reestablished, working, has another rental he's moving out of, so he's already reestablished. And we're going to turn this one down? It made no sense. It's one of my best tenants. Okay. Stayed with us for, for many years. And I think they went on to go buy a house. So it has to be a case-by-case -case basis because uh, e even if you look at uh, uh, the sex crimes, okay, and everybody's all, oh, no, 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 don't want that. Well, here's a case. This actually happened. Okay, they, uh, they found one with this guy. He says, well, what happened? And he says, yeah, you know, 
it was me and my girlfriend, and um, uh, and that's when I was 18, and she was 17. Oh. And oh, by the way, why don't you talk to her? She's my wife. Oh. Okay, yeah. so not not really there. That doesn't really fit into what we normally look as a pedophile. So that guy got the house. Okay, yeah. and, and that that story actually came from Fair Housing. So we have to look at each case. If it's a bad guy, then by all means, yeah, we don't want that. We don't we don't want to introduce that to the neighborhood because we're part of the neighborhood. You know, we my goal whenever I do a rental property is I want people to drive down the house and can't figure out which one's the rental. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. You don't yeah. want to, you don't want to be like, oh, that must be a rental because the people living there don't care about the house or something yeah, of that exactly. sort. Exactly. The car, you know, you can spot, you know, uh, grass is high and cars on the jacks. Yeah, most <laughs> yeah. definitely. Most definitely. But hey, I see a lot of homeowners that live the same way. So you, you, you never know. Um, so rent prices right now, they're definitely increasing. I mean, it's all over the news. It's yes. everywhere. Rent prices are high. Is that... Do you see that as a trend of just becoming the new norm? Is this part of inflation? I feel like housing prices increasing is, is part of inflation. It's all just the cost of living's going up. It's something that we're stuck with, and that's just is what it is. Is the same happening with Well, rental. I believe for a long time that we, for a long time, we've had low rent. And it was kind of, but through the years, uh, up to where uh, the pandemic, uh, the rent were rising. Just yeah. with the pandemic and the things that we went through there and, and a lot of people leaving, coming to, to Las Vegas, just really made our prices go crazy. But uh, I always felt that we're kind of low anyways. Yes. yes. Uh, now I think we're, we're getting to the point where it's starting to level out now with the inventory coming up some. And then you have the season adjustment as well because people don't look for rental properties in November, December, January, February. So they'll level out some. And then we'll see what happens next year. It's I hate to guess because I end up being wrong so often. I, I didn't see we're going to go up this high this year, yeah. but I thought we were going to go up. But this year was really, really crazy. I mean, we probably went up around about $400 on, on rents. On so average, So $1,600 yeah. rental property is now $2,000 a month. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Now, but the, it's... it's uh, now remember, in my business, there's a lot of amateurs out there. So you have some people starting in the property management business, and they don't, or employees that go in and they see an old comp. Oh, that's what the price is. Put it on the market, and look how good we are at rented in the first three hours. <laughs> they weren't good. What they did is they were too low. Yeah, that okay? was last year's price. Yeah. Exactly, or yeah. six months ago. Yeah. Even six months ago was is an old comp. So it takes really a professional to go comb through the MLS and see what's good. How what's out there, what's on available now, and what's been written in the past, and how long ago was it to make a determination. In some cases, some, if, uh, if there's not enough activity in that neighborhood for that particular house, sometimes you just have to guess. And I try to go a little high, and then we start bringing it down so we get the owner the top dollar price. Yeah, okay. most definitely. That's, that's the goal. And one of the interesting things that you said, too, is Vegas has always been, and, and I have, I've worked with investors that invest in, you know, rental properties, income properties across the country. And one of the investors that has multiple rentals, you know, in, in different spot, spots of the country told me, yeah, I, I just couldn't see about a year or two ago. He told me, I couldn't see investing in Vegas. The rents are just too low there for the price of the house. And yeah. I feel like that's been a, you know, it's been a thing with, with Vegas historically. It's always been, um, you know, very affordable and maybe we're adjusting now to kind of normalize that. Well, you have a terrific opportunity with the low interest rates that are out there now and with uh, people that are moving in. We have 5,000 people moving here a month, okay? And if you look at, you have, you said 3,500 uh, houses for sale and I show 1,400. That's just barely enough for the people coming in here. Plus the fact that other people that already live here looking for rental properties, there's still a shortage, which means that we'll probably still see some rent increases but but obviously not not as high as increases that, that that we saw this year but they'll still have uh they'll still be going up and some of the others are starting to see that yeah okay i'm under the market and i need to get my my rents up you're seeing that a lot more because yeah. i was really the pioneer earlier this year I mean, nobody was really getting that the rents were going up as high as they were and you could see that they're going really fast and i had people say well look at that one uh that one's lower than yours you have wait a day and it'll be gone and sure enough and then 
then they'd have to come to mine, you know, because where there wasn't anything else that was available. Yeah. So, but I think there's an opportunity for investors and also buyers agents to work with these investors and buy rental properties, because uh, you know, with uh, uh, you know, you can see that. Uh, there's not too much land out here, okay, that's available. <laughs> There's only okay? so far we can build. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And water shortages and everything else, I think it's an excellent opportunity to, to get in and invest now. Uh, and and e even with the, the, uh, the, the sale prices going up, I still think that you're, uh, we still have more room to go. But even if you did, I mean, at a 2%, 3% interest rates, you just can't beat that. I know. I know, and, and that is, and it's the security, you know, when people are, rentals, in, in my opinion, living in a rental should be temporary, you know, the terms of your lease, one year, maybe two years, you get in your, you, you stay there, you get whatever your finance, your plans, your goals together, and you look towards home ownership. You know, home ownership is going to have that security at the end of the term of the lease. You're not going to have an increase in rent. You know, your your landlord, how many times have you seen a lot this year where the landlords have decided to sell the homes because the prices are so good? <laughs> a lot. A lot. I that's, mean, that, that's been a problem. It's contributed to the shrinkage in inventory. Yes. Okay, that's why we have less to rent out there, yeah. which means, like I said, there's a good opportunity for investors to come out and go pick some, some properties up because there are people People desperate to get rental properties. Yeah, and, and you can't be mad at them for that. I mean, they bought it as an investment and it's a great time that the, the prices are good, so they they want to sell. But sometimes the tenants have been there for 20 years. You know, there's sometimes there's some very long-term tenants that yeah. never thought this person was going to sell the home. They weren't even planning on moving and they have to move because the landlords decided to sell the home. Um, sometimes, you know, the, someone has passed. I've heard situations where the landlord passes is his, you know, heirs have got in the home and they decided they didn't want to keep the rental. So there's always something that can happen when you have somebody else owning the home you live in. Well, I think that uh, everybody should have a rental property, but the fact is not everybody has, uh, sh sh uh, wants to be a landlord. Yeah. You know, I think it's a it's an excellent investment, but you have to have a certain frame of mind and understand what rental properties are. And uh, and I think it's important, too, that it's good to get a good property manager, because I think most that, that are doing it themselves uh, are all on the market. So it, the technology would be like this. Say you take your car into a shop, okay, and you pay whatever it takes to get your brakes fixed. Let's just say it's $600. Now you grab the tools and you start doing your own brake job and it costs you more than the $600 to do it yourself is what's happening with landlords doing it to themselves. Most of them are under the market and, most, and even if they get it at today's prices, they don't know how to raise the rents later down the road. Right. So now it's costing them money to do the work. Yeah. Where if I can, uh, I can, in most cases, make them more money and they don't have to do the work. So they don't have to get the call in the middle of the night. Now, um, as you said, you're a, you believe in people owning their own house, and I do as well. But it's not anybody that looks at that that way. At certain levels of their life, some people, especially millennials, they like the landlord taking care of the things they're the supposed to take care of. And, yeah, and everything like that. When That's the fridge true. breaks, they they want that fixed by someone else. But you'd be surprised on how many landlords don't want to do that. And part of the reason is because they're not making enough money on the property, so they go the cheap route. And I go to totally different way. It's just, I go higher, but we're going to take darn good care of the tenants. If something breaks, we're going to get it fixed right away. That's good. Because now I have the, the reasons why we can get more rents next time around. Okay, right. We've taken good care of them, and almost always they never dispute the $100 increases that I get from them. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the, that's that's very, very important, and that comes, I would say, from a, a, a professional, because that's all I do and that's all I think about, versus an owner that has to do the regular job and then the, the sideline is the rental property it's not going to get the same attention absolutely and mark what about you know owners people that are looking to purchase rental properties i know there's a misconception out there that you have to you know you have to be wealthy to buy or own a rental property or something like that but the, but the average any average person can own and, and acquire rental properties. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, there's a simple way to do that for the average 
uh, doesn't know anything about rental properties to get a rental property, and that's to take your existing property. You know, you got in for you know FHA three and a half percent down. Okay, so it's a uh, uh, and if you live in it for two or three years, that property is going to cash flow. So you leave that alone and you buy the next house. So you get with your lender, and instead of the $1,300 house, you upgrade to the 16, 1,700 square foot house. Maybe three bedrooms, now you go to four bedrooms. So as long as you can prove that uh, to the lender that, that, that you're upgrading, they'll let you rent the other house out. And it's, and it's not fraud as long as your original intentions was to live in the house under a VA or an FHA loan. You're, right. you're still okay to do that. And the lenders really don't care as long as you're, you're paying that mortgage. That's all they really care about when it comes down to it. Yeah. And so you could turn that property into a rental property and then the, um, uh, and buy your next house. And the great thing is instead of one growing for you, now you got two. Because yeah. we all wake in the morning, we get our cup of coffee, go out to work. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone do that for you? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and not only that, it's the, you know, if you bought your home three years ago, uh -huh. And your mortgage, you probably bought your home at a lot lower price than it is now, or you did buy your home at a lot lower price. That's not yeah. even a, a question about it. Then you have a lot lower mortgage on that home. Yeah. And then when you take the current rents that you have right now, the, the current rental prices that, that there are right now, you're going to make making good income on that home. You go to buy another home, you know, families grow. Sometimes you decide, you know, after a few years, it happens to everybody that this home does, feels too small. I want a bigger house. I want to move. You grow, you, you upgrade into that next home. Now you're making good income on this home, which can actually, the income that you're making off of your previous home can help you pay for the new home, the yes, bigger home. It's, a, it, it's kind of a no-brainer. It's something that everybody should think of because eventually... One day, with through the tenants paying rent, you're going to have that mortgage paid off completely, yep. and that's completely cash flow, and, and somebody else has been paying it for you. That's right, and there's another benefit. There's the tax benefit. Now, I'm not a tax expert, so you want to go to a good tax person for this, but uh, you have tax benefits. Now, you do on a house that you buy, but it's only on the, the interest, okay? With the interest rate so low, it's not the right off it once was. But with a rental property, you have depreciation, you can write off my fee, the HOA, there's a lot of stuff you can write off. So it's a very, still a very good uh, uh, write off on your taxes. No. So you want to, so if you're, if, if, if you're successful and able to, to go buy the next house, this will really help you on tax wise uh, to bring your, your, your tax burden down. Yep. And then eventually, I mean, you look at the time, if you're just, you know, you're working every day and you're working towards retirement, by the time you retire, these homes could be paid off and you could have just cash flow income. I, I call it mailbox money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Of course, that presents the next problem because uh, I always tell people that it, it's not that rental properties don't make you money because it's going to. In most cases, they almost always do. Here's the problem is the cash starts building up and up, the value gets higher and higher, and you get the calls from everybody, do you want to sell, do you want to sell, do you want to sell? Mm. And it's really tough to leave this on the table, but if you can, if you can leave this alone, okay, then you have a nice chunk of cash when you go to retire. Yeah. So don't refinance, don't sell the property, just hold on to it as long as you possibly can. Now, if you get into an area where it's not really, I'm not seeing it so much because the, the, the lack of rental properties, but sometimes if the neighborhood changes and it's not what it once was, then you do a 1031 exchange and get into a new area where the property is going to perform. Yeah. Or you remember, if you have an HOA and the HOA is like increasing and it's just not making much sense at, at that time. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, another area that a property manager can really help out is also an HOA. So a lot of people have a, have a um, bad view of HOAs. I don't. I work with HOAs. I look to be to become their best friend because they got these all over the place. And everybody treats them bad. So if you treat those property managers at the HOAs well, they they usually very very quickly. We had one recently where she was getting the owner was getting two thousand dollars a month fined. Okay, because she was doing it herself. Oh, my goodness. She had goodness. seven open violations. Now, HOAs, the reason why they do fines is because they want you to notice that they exist. Okay? So, we, we uh, the own, now, a lot of times what owners do is they, they hand the property owner and go, boy, it's off my hand. Okay, how come we don't have it fixed yet? 
So it's okay, give me all the violations, let me look at what we got, okay, and we want to go fix them. Then we sent letters to the HOA, okay, we got this one fixed, this one fixed, don't understand this one, don't understand that one. And within 24 hours, we had six of the seven violations all closed out, and, and we had the fines immediately stopped. Yeah. And I only have one left, and I got to go hearing next month, and, uh, and then that one will go away as well. Because we're going to prove it was over dog waste, and we're going to prove that, yeah, the tenants are taking care of it. Because what happens is you put a tenant in the property, and they had a pet. Then they, everybody, oh, it's bad because we got a tenant in the property, and we're going to go after them. So you have to play that game. And, that, and he explained it to the tenant. This is what we got to do. You got to clean them up after daily. And I have, actually have uh, addendums in my lease to cover all this. So okay. they follow it. And I said, you got to play the game and then we can be a little more relaxed, but we got to get them off, off of us. And we did. And, uh, and, and after a while, then the tenants slowly get into the neighborhood and everybody likes them. That's okay. Good. But when you've had a bad tenant, everybody has the, uh, the feelings that, well, all tenants are bad. And that's simply not true. That, that is, that is correct. There's, there's plenty of tenants out there that are good that really maintain the home and take good care of it. Um, so what are things that people should look for when they're looking to hire a property manager? So there's people out there that may already have rental properties and they're stressed out trying to manage them or take care of them themselves. Maybe some people are unhappy with the management company that they're with or people are looking to purchase a rental property and they're looking for a property manager. What are some of the things that they should look for? Okay. Uh, I would say number one would be experience. How many years have, have they been doing it? If it's the first year, two years, five years, I probably don't have enough experience. Um, where, where is the company? Uh, uh, what's the reputation of the company? Go online, look at that. That doesn't tell you everything, but it helps tell the, the story. Look at Google, look at Yelp, look at the reviews. And then um, uh, NARPM. NARPM is the National Association of Residential Property Managers. Now, us realtors, we belong to NAR, which is the National Association of Realtors. But the problem with us and NAR is that we're pretty much treated as the unwanted redheaded stepchild of the real estate business. We get kind of ignored. Right. So NARPM has come along, and uh, we, we get a lot more information and training and, and better tools for the trade to, to, um, to treat our clients better, our customers, which is our tenants, and might make life easier for us uh, uh, as uh, property managers. When I first started, uh, we collected uh, by hand rents. You know, rent day was a big day. Now it's not anymore because it's all done online. You had to go so. out to every house? No, they came to us, but you had a long line, and you know, then you would have the excuses, why well, I can't pay rent this month and everything else. And now that they're able to pay online, we got rid of all that stuff. Yeah. We have like a 99.9% uh, rent pay rate. So right. that's another reason to use a property manager and also see, do they collect rents online? So, um, and then another one is, how do they do their applications? Is it the old-fashioned paper app? Then you want to toss it away. They, they're in the stone age. Okay, because most of us do it all online. It's so much easier and so much more efficient. Plus, I can actually read the stuff versus someone scratch. Right, right. Okay, so uh, that's another one. And another thing that I would do is give them a call on your non-office hours after, after five and on the weekends. Will someone answer the phone? If they don't and your property's on a market, guess what? They're not marking your property on the weekend. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love showing properties on the weekends because nobody else is there, so they're going to rent my property. So I get them every time. That's and good. And I get it all the time. Says, God, you're the only one who would answer the phone. So even on Sundays, I don't mind. I got to wash my Raiders first, but then after that, then we go and uh, show rental properties. So, and usually it's only one or to twice, so it's not that big of a deal. But most cases, I get applications, we get it rented. So, um, Again, that's one of the ways we, we make our owners more money is being more efficient and getting out there and getting them rented out. Wow. Um, let's see, I had a couple more notes. Let me check my notes here on what else we should do for property managers. Um, I know you spoke a little bit about the pet screening. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's another reason. See if they use, uh, I use pet screener and okay. I like that a lot. And the reason for using that is it makes sure they got their, their shots, if they had any biting in uh, history, and they're, they're, uh, they're, are, are they registered. Then another one would come up all the time is you know, they'll ask, do you take pets? 
And of course, you, you know, your property says no, because owner said no on that. And then guess what the pet suddenly mm -hmm. becomes? A comfort, emotional support animal. Okay, and most people don't know how to check those out, so they just take them, which means you gotta take the animal without a deposit if you do it correctly. Okay, uh, federal guideline says you can't get a deposit on a emotional support, comfort animal, and service animal, okay? okay. Now, Pet Screener can check all these out. In the past, about 60% did not check out, which means I get the deposit. We had a lady that she said she had three emotional support animals. Oh, Couldn't wow. prove it. <laughs> now we got $500 per animal pet deposit. I get an extra $1,500. Right. Okay. And um, it also, so going on pets, I see a lot of owners that say, uh, uh, emotionally, no, I don't want any pets in my house. Right. But here's what you got to look at it is, is, are you ever going to live in the house? Number one. If it's yes, okay, then I understand that. But if it's no, in a lot of cases you're going to move in, you're probably going to rip out the carpet and the flooring anyway, so then it really is not going to matter that much. Okay, but if it's no, then why not take pets? So if you have two houses side by side, okay, so you're renting one, no pets, and it takes you a month longer to get it rented because, um, because you're saying no to pets because you cut your market out 60 to 70%. Here I'm getting higher deposits and I can get it rented at a higher rate, okay, so my owner's making more money, and we get it rented real fast. Say in the first week or two weeks, we get it rented, so they're making more money. So here we already lost 2000 here we haven't, okay? Yeah. Then if there is some pet damage, then I have uh, uh, the pet deposit to go after and the security deposit to go after that. Absolutely. And uh, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, if there is any little dam uh, damage that's not covered by the deposits, and it's very minimal compared to over over in this example here, so I would say yes to pets. And then we also take the next step is we have inspections that the owners can sign up for, okay? And then I visit the, the property 90 days prior to make sure not run a herd of cats out of the place. They are taking good care of it. And then we uh, then we offer the property for another rent uh, for another year with a with a rent increase. It's wow. not a big rent increase, but but it's a it's a rent increase that they agree to, that the owners agree to. So everybody is 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 we've taken good care of them. They're happy, and and we move forward. So and that's a case where a lot of owners that do it themselves, they feel very uncomfortable with this process of of raising the rents because they've heard of all the stories. Well, Judy has to have your braces, and the dogs had this, the, yeah. the operation, and and this and that, and they feel so. Oh God, okay, well, I guess we'll we'll wait, and then of course that never happens. And versus a professional. Uh, you know, I can I, I show a much different story. I show them the rental comps and where we are, and this is the this is my offer to you. So it's not as high as we had to remarket the property, but it's a little bit higher than what you're paying now. Most cases, they'll take that. Yeah, no, and th and that is it. It is good to have someone else to be in the middle, a, a professional to negotiate that to talk about that because it, it is it it you know it's per, it's a, it becomes a personal relationship when someone's self managing their property. Well, many people think that you and I are in the real estate business, but I argue that we're not. We are actually in the business of emotions when it comes to real estate, and emotions run high. This so, is true. So with a professional, we can take the emotions out because I can run stats and, and uh, information to the owner to where it makes sense that, yeah, we, you know, make a good idea to, to take pets. Like I said, if you're not going live to live in the property, then what difference does it make? That's absolutely And things right. can be fixed. So if they do make – and I tell people, too, let's all think that, oh, little Fido is not going to do damage. Let's say that they, that Fido is. If they tear up the carpet, then we have ways to fix that, okay, and charge the tenant. And by the way, if my tenants do have a vital that's tearing up the, the carpet or the blinds or anything else, then, you know, they're not going to stay another year. It's time for them to go find another rental property and we'll try the next time around. Absolutely. I hardly ever have to go do that, but that's our mind frame. We want our tenants to take good care of the property. We want to provide a good property for them and we want to properly maintain it. So, you know, they got to pay rent, take good care of it. That's their obligation. Our obligation is to make sure that it's a safe environment, that it's fixed and, um, uh, um, uh, and they can, and they have a place where they they love our online payments. They love that. Yeah. And most of mine all pay uh, auto pay, which means they're paying like in the 28th or the 29th. They're always paying early, and so it makes everybody's job easier. Yeah, most definitely. That's a huge convenience 
Now, Mark, if people have more questions about property management, um, how do they reach you? Just give me a call. Uh, my cell phone, uh, I think it's on the screen, 702-278-4781. And my website is a great place to see all the things that we do. Uh, one of my, uh, when I went on my, uh, went on my own and looking to start a new website, we went to everybody else's and I saw the same story being told over. Everybody said the same thing. And I, th and I thought, we wanted to differentiate ourselves from the competition, plus the fact that I don't believe most people really understand was it that we actually do. You know, most think, yeah, you just get the tenant. Well, it's far more than that. And, I, and if I say it, then I say the same thing over and over again. So we actually, on the website, has all the information, the things that we actually do. And okay. it's more than what most are, are saying, you know, screening tenants and doing maintenance requests. It, it's more than that. You know, the online payments, the uh, online applications, and and taking care of HOAs, and, and, uh, and also handling issues. When tenants are upset, how do we handle that? Because you don't want someone really upset living in your house. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's when damage happens. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to let it get to that. So what's your website address? TheRentalListerLV.com. Okay. TheRentalListerLV.com. That's pretty easy to remember. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to Mark. He's very resourceful. And if you have any other questions that I can answer, you guys know how to reach me. 702-308-2878. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's show. We look forward to seeing you next Thursday. And remember, if you're watching our show, please take a moment, like, comment, share. We love hearing your feedback. Have a wonderful day.